In this video, I'm gonna show you around my home workshop, garage, workspace, shed, whatever you like to call it. This is where I spend most of my time, so let's take a look around. To give you a little bit of background on Engineered to Slide, I moved in here uh, over 10 years ago and finished off the ute build and since then uh, I moved out briefly to a commercial space and now moved back here because this is where the heart of Engineered to Slide is and this is where I find myself the most productive and in recent months I've given this place an overhaul and I've got it working perfectly and I want to show you around and show you all of the features that I think work perfectly for my situation. Hopefully you can gain some inspiration for your own workspace or hopefully you can find some ideas in the ways that I've done things. But throughout this, I want you to remember that I've been at this for nearly 20 years and uh, throughout all of my time, I've worked out what works for me and what doesn't work for me. And also all of the tools and machinery that you see in here have been a culmination of understanding what I need and what fits my space. So everybody's going to have a different situation. Everybody's going to have a different budget. But what I'll do is try and detail everything that I'm using, uh, why it works well. And I'll also put all of this detail into a blog post so that uh, you can see all of the machinery and what might fit into your space and what might fit your budget and power requirements for the workspace that you have. Let's start off with one of the most asked questions and that is the overall size of the garage. It measures 12 meters long by seven meters wide and the eaves are 2.7 meters tall and the pitch in the middle of the garage is 3.4 meters tall. The floor coating is an epoxy flake floor finish and I did this myself and you can see more details in a blog post that I did on the process. Uh, definitely learn a lot doing this and it was a long process It involved grinding the floor back to the smooth concrete and then putting a base coat down and I use neutral grey and then use these flakes which stick on top of the base coat and then this is covered with a clear. And having a clean and well presented workshop floor is uh, worth it even if you do drop and lose a few bolts from time to time. So just inside the roller door, we've got the Brobo saw, which I'll get to in a minute, and the roller rack. But just before that, we have my uh, little upright steel store. So what this does is it stores all of the steel offcuts and tube lengths. Uh, and these are very easy to see like this. And this is something that I've tried either having them laying down or standing up. And I prefer them standing up as they don't get any dust, which attracts moisture, which attracts rust on the steel sections and it's easy to see and work out what type of tube you have, what lengths you have and what you can use for your project. So this is really easy to shift around the workshop and move it's, as it's on some caster wheels like a lot of the things in the workshop. But this little steel rack is, uh, is something that I've found to work really, really well. It's not great for huge lengths of steel, but anything around two meters long fits in it really nicely. And I stack the long lengths at the back, the short lengths at the front, and I've got a small section where I can place the sheet metal on. And these things get really, really heavy. So uh, make sure that you build it pretty strong. I built mine out of some angle iron and flat steel bar. And this is around six millimeters thick. On this wall, we have the cutoff saw and then I've incorporated some storage underneath and over above. So this area did take me a few tries to get right, but I'm really happy with the operation of it now. The whole Brobo and the roller uh, cabinet setup is on caster wheels, which means it can be moved out and moved around. And then the uh, little mezzanine storage area up top, which holds the two cabinets, is mounted to the roof and to the purlins of the garage. And this is made by 50 by 50 uh, square tube and has some MDF on top of it, which uh, makes everything really strong and sturdy and gives me more storage for everything that I require. Down below here, we have the more used and more regularly used items. So we have uh, a drop saw, which I'll use sometimes to cut longer lengths uh, that won't fit in the garage. And then I have uh, my little compressor, my cordless compressor. And then over the other side, I have some offcuts of steel, some bolts that I don't use too regularly, but it's really handy to have them there uh, if I don't have them in my main bolt toolbox, which we'll get to soon. And, uh, and the rollers on top, 
uh, they allow the steel to roll in to the Brobo saw and this is a cold cut saw. So it's very important that we use uh, coolant, but I like to keep a pretty clean workspace so I don't actually have the coolant running in my cutoff saw. I use wax, which uh, is applied before I take a cut. And as the wax heats up, it turns to a fluid and it helps uh, the blade life and the cleanliness of the cut, which also helps when it comes to welding. Up here we have some alloy wheel stands and these are really handy and I use them regularly for wheel alignments. So this is using a string line wheel alignment setup and allows me to get under the car, uh, do the alignment changes and verify them while it's up on these stands. Over in this corner of the workshop, we've got a toolbox, uh, which obviously houses tools. And this is really handy as I've got more tools over the other side of the garage, which I'll get to soon. But this one is really good for working on vehicles and obviously it's easily maneuverable being on wheels and I can uh, take it out into the driveway and work on anything that I need. I have a tire changer as well, which um, as I regularly attend drift events, this is really, really handy to be able to change tires. Up above me, I have all of the spare tires on wheels or some of them are on wheels. And, uh, and I think this is probably one of the biggest things where you can start to save uh, floor space in a workshop is to get these bulky things up out of the way and a tire rack is the perfect way to do it. So this is all constructed out of 50 by 50 by 1.6 millimeter thick uh, square steel tubing. And this is all braced back to the garage and, uh, and this houses wheels and tires that stretch the entire length of the 12 meter uh, roof here. Out the back here, I created a little room for storage and this used to be an outside space, but I put some uh, color bond sheeting around here and confined it all in so that I could store bits and pieces like all of the aero, um, all of the fiberglass molds for the Hilux and all of the bits and pieces that I don't use regularly. And there's also uh, a couple of gearboxes, a couple of SR20 motors waiting here for cars to go in. But uh, any space is worth making the most of when uh, space is limited. This is what's known as a manual pan brake and this has a 1250 millimeter long capacity by two millimeters thick. And uh, this can be used on uh, aluminium up to three millimeters thick as well. And it's a really handy machine. Each of these fingers is adjustable and, uh, and removable. So you can actually fold boxes on this. And that's very handy when it comes to building uh, aluminium sumps, fuel tanks, uh, anything that requires a nice corner to be folded and then welded. And I've got this on caster wheels using a 50 by 50 uh, square steel tube base. And this allows me to move it around the workshop, push it hard up against the wall, and then shift it out if I'm uh, folding something that's larger than is required. Even though it is quite a large machine and a very small capacity, it really can't be replaced. And for anything that we work on in motorsport, three millimeter is really the maximum uh, for any brackets or bits and pieces. Central to the back wall, I've got a whole toolbox full of nuts and bolts and you really can't discount how important nuts and bolts are when building a car. And to be able to find uh, the exact size and diameter and length and also correlating nut uh, quickly and easily is important. So that's why I've got this whole toolbox set up with uh, each individual size. So we have M5, M6, M8, M10, M12, and then we have our larger bolts as well. So all of these are organized in this toolbox and I find it quick and easy to be able to go there, uh, grab something and then be able to assemble the car. This is a manual guillotine and it's used for cutting sheet metal. This has a capacity of 1300 millimeters by 1.6 millimeters thick, but I can push it to three millimeters thick, especially with aluminum. And uh, this is a manually operated machine. So it requires stomping down on the pedal to be able to cut the material. And I've made the most of the floor space here by adding a roller onto the side and also a thicker guillotine here, which I'll show you. Just like the manual pan brake that we looked at earlier, the guillotine's also on a roller base that has caster wheels. And then I've made use of the floor space by adding in some storage underneath. And this holds my upright tube bender. And I've got a bar bender under here, which I can take out of here and mount to the bench. And then all of the dies that I use with the upright bender. So trying to always maximize the amount of space that I have whilst keeping everything portable. 
So I mentioned the upright bender which sits under the guillotine and this is my first bender that I used to build the Hilux and this I drew and made myself which uh, proved to be quite inexpensive and this is something that you can do also by downloading the plans at engineertoslide.com. Moving on from that bender, I then went to the horizontal bender to build uh, a number of roll cages with. And this is hydraulically actuated, so it means you can build um, roll cage tubing that is very strong and large diameter without really having to um, create a sweat because this takes all of the effort out of it. Um, you can also download these plans at engineerdecide.com and build your own. This one is a, is a really nice bender and I've made a 50 by 50 millimeter base on caster wheels again and then welded on some uh, rod which actually holds all of the dies that are associated with this bender. So the whole lot can be moved in and out as one and, uh, and it's a really good little unit and something that is very powerful when building a roll cage or a full tube chassis. So this brings us to the lathe which is one of the last machines on the back wall here and this is something that is uh, my specialty. I am a qualified fitter and turner and spent many years at Ford product development machine shop operating one of these so I know my way around the lathe and I really appreciate having one in the workshop as it took me many years to be able to afford. This particular machine has a length of one meter and has a bore of two inches which means that I can fit two inch tube right through the center which is really handy for any roll cage tubing and stuff like that uh, as I can polish it quite easily by extending it in and out. And a lathe is a tool that you grow accustomed to. They all have their own little quirks and ways that they'd like to be used. So um, understanding how they work is something that we'll be talking more about here at Engineered to Slide and we'll be doing a course on operating one of these uh, should you have the opportunity to have one in your workshop. This small red toolbox just has the components for the lathe and just some offcuts of round bar stock. And we have the larger round bar stock sitting on top. So we have aluminium, brass, mild steel and stainless steel. So now we move into my favorite part of the workshop and this has all of my tools and toolboxes lining the wall, my fabrication table in the middle, my TIG welder, and then we'll move into the machine shop soon. This fabrication table is one of the best things in my garage and you can download the plans and DXF files at engineeredtoslide.com and fabricate one yourself. It's actually made from six millimeter thick mild steel that's pickled and oiled and it has these 50 millimeter center holes with a 16 millimeter diameter stretching all over the 2400 by 800 millimeter wide surface. And this allows us to mount angle plates such as these 90 degree angle plates and uh, riser blocks to be able to jig parts so that we can weld them without them warping. And, uh, and this is a huge asset in any fabrication shop. And by downloading the plans and getting these uh, flat packed and ready to weld up, you can save a whole heap of money in the process. So back here, I'm running two welders. I've first got my TIG, which I do all of my aluminium uh, and chromoly and stainless steel welding. And then we've got the MIG welder, which is really fast and effective for doing larger items like a jig table or welding up the 50 by 50 tube that constructs a lot of this garage. The TIG weld table is a great thing to have in the workshop and we've got the plans for this at engineerdecide.com. But one addition that I've made and I've found really, really handy is this small clamp on swivel vise. So this just clamps onto the 50 millimeter tube that it's made from and the vise allows uh, us to have 360 degree swivel action while clamping up our parts in the jaws. And this gives us a third hand so that we can have the filler rod in one hand the TIG torch in the other, and then be able to clamp our parts and set them at the angle that we need to weld them on. So behind me here is what I call the mess room, and this is a room that measures 2.5 meters wide by three meters long. 
and this contains all of the tools that create mess to keep the workshop clean. So inside here we've got a small bench that measures uh, 600 millimeters wide by 400 millimeters deep and it's got a six millimeter thick mild steel top on it and this mounts a 150 millimeter vise that uh, is used for cutting, grinding, filing and doing all sorts of things. I always run soft jaws which are aluminium angles just to make sure that the serrations on the vise doesn't bruise whatever I'm clamping. And then beside this we've got a bench grinder and this has a linishing attachment on one side. I do have a dedicated linisher but this is really handy for just doing the smaller jobs that requires the finer grit and this is really good for uh, sharpening the tungsten for the TIG welder and underneath the bench we've got a toolbox and this houses all the drills and, uh, and the files and all the bits and pieces that I require in here and this saves time having to go to the other toolboxes so it's a uh, it's important that whatever you put inside the mess room is covered so that it doesn't get uh, just as messy as the floor will in here. Over in the corner we have a ProCut uh, bandsaw table. Now this is mounting a uh, cordless uh, bandsaw and this is something that I didn't really think I needed until I had it and ever since I've had it I use it absolutely all the time. So it's brilliant for uh, cutting small pieces that are sometimes more difficult to either cut on the Brobo saw or, um, or through other means such as a hacksaw or a file. So over here on the opposite wall we've got a pedestal drill and this is a belt driven drill and it's great for using hole saws and the larger drill bits that you wouldn't usually uh, use with a hand drill just because this creates more torque and allows us to clamp down our parts onto the table through the T-slots. In the middle here we've got a linisher and this is a high speed linisher that is great for removing high amounts of material and also flattening uh, surfaces such as turbo flanges and uh, exhaust header flanges. It's really loud and messy hence why it's here in the mess room. The last item in here is my mill drill and this is a heavy duty drill or a light duty mill. Uh, basically being a mill it means you can uh, travel the bed from side to side up and down and this allows us to cut T-slots and, uh, and grooves and also uh, surface finish items. This is a hydraulic press and it's been a great addition to my workshop and it's something that is really powerful when you need to press a bearing out or um, bend a flange on a bit of steel that you couldn't do on a vise. And uh, it has a rating of I think 20 tonnes so there's plenty of headroom here to wreck just about anything. The hoist that I'm using here in the workshop is a Max Jax hoist and this has a maximum lift height of 1200 millimeters so it's not a full size hoist. It's rated at around 2 tonne so it suits most race car applications and with a few extensions added in under the pads you can actually get the car to lift full height but it's not designed for that. What it's really powerful and capable of is being able to easily fit and be removed from your garage floor. So it doesn't have to be a permanent addition and it's something that you can bring in when you need it and take out when you don't. So uh, it's a really handy little addition here in the workshop and it's great for removing and fitting engines and that's primarily what I use it for. So there you have it. This is my workspace and it's a place that I gain inspiration from. It's a place where I love spending time and it's a place where I find myself the most productive and I've got plenty of projects to come for the future. So be sure to keep watching at engineertoslide.com and if you want any of the plans or understand any of the processes that went into building this place, then remember that we've got courses available on MIG welding, TIG welding. We've got our staple skills, which runs through the operation of most of the machines in here. I hope you've enjoyed this and happy fabricating.